It has been a long time since I've de done one of these, but this is uh, something that piqued my interest when I saw it, that apparently AEW owner Tony Khan has been in contact or been directly debating the idea, the logistics of a joint show with WWE. I don't know how likely it is. I don't know how, you know, the interest level. I don't know any of that. But what we do know is that if 2022 provides anything, if 2022 provides anything, 2022 has provided that sometimes the impossible is even possible. So we will base it off of that that I don't really know the logistics offhand, and <clears throat> um, and Tony Khan is willing to, is open to talking about a joint show with WWE, according to various reports. He is willing to talk to WWE. He has not had communication with WWE, but he is willing to talk to WWE about the possibility of a joint show. So this is a deep dive documentary into the possibility of a WWE versus AEW joint super show. Let's get into it. Things to keep in mind from both perspectives. Learn from the past and take things slow. The one thing that WWE did wrong, or one of the many things WWE did wrong, when it came to the invasion back 20 years ago, or 21 years ago, was they rushed into it. They didn't take any time to allow the fans to get to know the people from WCW. They didn't take the time to build up the people from WCW. They just expected that the fans would know who these people are. Had you brought in Kevin Nash and Scott Hall and the NWO and Goldberg and Scott Steiner and Rey Mysterio and Ric Flair with the invasion, you wouldn't have had that chance. And this is not a slight on Diamond Dallas Page or Booker T or Canyon or guys like that. It is to point out the obvious. Dallas Page was not on. Dallas Page was the only guy on the level of Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and Goldberg. Sting, Hogan, Goldberg, Flair, all on separate levels. Booker T was a step below. Scott Steiner, how he was booked in the last few months of WCW, put him a step above Booker T, in my opinion, because Scott Steiner was a dangerous man in the last few months of WCW. And Booker T did beat him, but as Booker T defeated the most dangerous man in WCW in 2001, he was never given the opportunity to prove that he was on Steiner's level. Balance is what, it makes, what makes a good show. If you do a joint show, it's not about one promotion looking better than the other. It's about compromise. It's about sharing the thing and making the best show possible, doing what makes sense, having those who win those win who make sense. Like, when, like, for example, point three, the Forbidden Door, New Japan and AEW was a perfect balance of seeing AEW guys and New Japan guys cooperate with each other and come together for a positive show and a great show and one of the best joint shows we've seen in a long time. And also, speaking of New Japan, a joint show with WWE and all, all, all Elite Wrestling could bring in companies that the, respect, that the two respective superpowers have relationships with. Another thing to keep in mind, though, is there is an alarming difference in the booking style of WWE and AEW, as both promotions know their fan bases and cater to them. WWE is sports entertainment. AEW is pro wrestling. They can mesh together. They have meshed together. WWE doesn't like being pro wrestling, but in more than one occasion, on more than one occasion, does cater to the pro wrestling fans and has given the wrestling fans reasons to show why WWE has that middle letter in WWE and still has wrestling in their name. You know, and in some cases, AEW goes the route of sports entertainment and doesn't always just cater to pro wrestling. 
the fact of the matter is, wrestling and sports entertainment can mesh together. It's just sometimes one outweighs the other instead of there being a balance. It's like a story I was always told, or a story I've heard multiple times by multiple people, that the WWE creative team was its was at its best when there was a balance of wrestling minds and television minds, sports entertainment minds on the creative team, when there was a balance and not just an overwhelming majority of television writers as opposed to wrestling writers or one or the other. It's all about a balance. Now, as I mentioned, an invasion. Imagine you're watching Raw and you hear reports that AEW talent are near the arena and trying to enter the building. Sort of like DX did in 1999 when they tried to enter the building, or 1998, uh, back during the Monday Night Wars when they took the tank or the Jeep to the Norfolk Scope and tried to enter the building. Imagine if they actually did. As fans, of course. And just imagine, because I think it would be the perfect people to have it do. You're watching Dynamite and the New Day are sitting ringside. For a rent row. Similarly to how it was back in 1996 at the King of the Ring when Savio Vega, uh, during Savio Vega's King of the Ring qualifying match where ECW talent were sitting ringside. Paul Heyman, Tommy Dreamer, and the Sandman. But think about this. Think about this. Scott Hall's appearance on Nitro in May of 1996 would be magnified 200 times because it wouldn't be a former star appearing on the competition's program. Imagine seeing AJ Styles in one of the suites or Roman Reigns in one of the suites with Paul Heyman at On Dynamite. Imagine Moxley, the Bucks, Kenny Omega, or... Jericho or um, Darby Allen or Sting appearing on Raw or SmackDown in the crowd. You know, yes, fine. Oh, it's not an invasion if they're not jumping anybody. It's not an invasion of this. It's not an invasion of that. We'll get there in a second. We'll get there in a second. We'll get there in a second. It's just a picture. It's just a moment. Just imagine the moment that you would want to capture that everybody would capture if you see them at ringside, if you see them in the, in the crowd, if you see them sitting there ringside. Not if you see them jumping somebody. Not if you see them getting physically involved. If you just see them on the program. Even if they're shown by accident, which is what I think that should be, should be the case. An, invasi- an invasion could be possible, but it would need to be it would, need, it would be needed because you would also need to keep them away from each other. I still firmly believe that holding off physicality in some cases forces fans to tune into a pay-per-view, which is the whole point of the pay-per-view. I know it's an outdated way to think, but, if, but why have pay-per-views if you always give away pay-per-view quality dream matches for free? Dream matches like we would see there, would be, there would be no case to have them on free television it would do each match a disservice if you saw them on free TV. An altercation? Some form of physicality? That's different. A match? Any dream match that would be brought up because of this joint show, would ha- there would be no right. There would be no right to have them featured on free television. There would be no rhyme or reason to have them on- featured on free television because it would do a disservice to the idea of the dream match. And I know it's an outdated concept, but what's the point of having pay-per-views if you don't give people a reason to watch them? Before we get to the other companies, I just want to mention what I said, um, what I said earlier about the invasion concept, as I am screwing up the uh, PowerPoint. Two things. Number one, it would start with people sitting in the crowd. It has to start with people sitting in the crowd because you announce their presence. You announce their presence. And if I was Tony Khan, I would buy television time. Not 
from WWE, from the USA Network, to run a commercial. I would buy television time to air a vignette during, during Raw. I would buy television time in some way, shape, or form to get the people's attention that are watching WWE, that AEW not only exists, but is in the building. I would buy television time right before Raw starts, telling people that AEW will, may or may not be showing up there tonight. So keep your ears open and your eyes open. And then hell, I would have Kip Sabian, I would have Kip Sabian show up outside the arena wearing his gimmick, showing up outside the arena as WWE loads in. And I would have somebody out there filming, showing WWE loading into the arena with Kip Sabian out there. I would then, again, during the broadcast, I would again have Tony Khan purchase commercial time on the USA Network for AEW to point to the fans saying, AEW, AEW is in the building. AEW is in the building. We are here. You want to ignore us? You want to make it where you pretend we don't exist? We are here in the building tonight. You won't be able to ignore us anymore. And after, you know, a couple weeks of that, you have press releases from WWE. You have press releases from AEW. Even, even, even with Tony Khan not doing it, you... Jericho, have Jericho purchased television time for the Jericho Appreciation Society. And you have Tony Khan claim that Jericho's acting on his own. That WWE and AEW will hold a meeting to discuss what's been going on. And you have Tony Khan pretend like he does not know a damn thing about what's going on. You give Jericho, Moxley, the Blackpool Combat Club. You have Eddie Kingston appear. You have Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, the Bucks, anybody. Anybody on the program, you have them appear. You have Miro go there. You have the former WWE guys go there and shoot on why AEW is better. Why AEW gave them a place to be themselves. And then you flip it on its head when it keeps happening. WWE goes to T Time Warner and buys T Turner Broadcasting, Turner Media, and buys television time, commercial time on Turner Media to advertise WWE. You can have Xavier Woods, the, miss, the master of YouTube, go, to, go and do, you know, film a special up, up, down, down intro outside of an upcoming AEW show. I still think that the New Day showing up ringside, Kofi and Xavier showing up ringside, front row at the AEW show would be the perfect moment would be the perfect feature because I can see them with popcorn enjoying themselves enjoying the matches and showing the entertainment side of the new day and why they are by far one of the be one of the greatest trios ever to put be put together in WWE and you have people like Seth Rollins AJ Styles Cody Rhodes imagine Cody Rhodes talking about AEW as a WWE contracted wrestler Triple H you know, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, The Rock, Steve Austin, Kevin Owens. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. You can even have Kevin Owens come out and say he has friends there. But there, they chose AEW. He chose to stay here in WWE for a reason. There's so many alternatives, there's so many ways, there's so many ideas, and I can't do this on the fly because I wouldn't do it justice. But there are so many different concepts you could do, especially factoring in this. Forbidden Door, it made it clear that AEW and All Japan, AEW and New Japan, sorry, AEW and New Japan have a great relationship. And if I was New Japan Pro Wrestling, if Tony Khan and Stephanie started having discussions about a joint show, I would have my ear close to it and say, I'm in, if I was them. Especially if New Japan wants to st still keep branching over to the United States. There's no better way to branch over the United States than to latch on to WWE. 
even for a show. Which if New Japan is in, that means CMLL would likely be in. Because CMLL and, w and New Japan have carried on a decades-long partnership. And it's pretty obvious to me, at least, with the amount of times that WWE has worked together with Impact, that Scott Demore has provided some form of a positive relationship with, with somebody in WWE to allow Mickey James to appear on the Royal Rumble and to have AJ Styles appear at Slammiversary. So it is possible that Impact would throw their names in the hat and ask to be a part of it. The only problem that I could see with this happening is Vince. We just got to talk a second about Vince. I know right now Vince McMahon isn't exactly somebody in the best placement among WWE management for a variety of reasons. But everything WWE has to do with Vince. And if I was Vince, I would look at it, sit down with Tony Khan, I would look at it and give Tony Khan the time of day because of the amount of money it could make both companies if done right. I'm not going to repeat what I say here because I know it's going to piss somebody off, but the fact of the matter is the Monday Night Wars are gone and are never coming back. This is not a war between AEW and WWE. This is the healthiest the wrestling business has been in decades. This is the healthiest the wrestling business has been in my generation. Impact is hitting on all cylinders. AEW is doing well. New Japan is expanding. The NWA is steadily climbing back to where they... The, it's the NWA is steadily regaining the momentum they lost because of shutting down during COVID. Ring of Honor has finally stay, found steady, a steady placement under the leadership of Tony Khan. The fact of the matter is, wrestling has never been healthier. It is not about a war. It is about the stability of the wrestling business, and in my opinion, wrestling has never been healthier. And that's what fans should focus on, not the fact that AEW is better than WWE or vice versa. It doesn't matter, because what are you going to do if WWE and AEW do a joint show? My opinion, AEW and WWE is something, well, WWE and anybody is something I never thought I would have envisioned as a possibility, even as an open discussion. But 2022 has been a year like no other. The last three years have been a year like no other. I do firmly believe in some, I do firmly believe that, a, that an invasion of some form could work, but it needs but it needs to build tension and excitement and not give away pay-per-view quality matches on television. You can have confrontations. You can even have AEW people. NXT is in Florida. You can have AEW people show up on NXT. You could start there at NXT in the Performance Center. You know, you could start there. It might be a little bit harder because of it being the performance center and a closed off facility as opposed to an arena. But you could start there. You know, but I still remember, I believe it was Mike Awesome. Mike Awesome was the first person to jump ship or one of the first people to jump ship during the WCW invasion in 2001. And how he did it, they were in the back, the back area in the parking lot where they come into the arena, the hill or the ramp where they come down to the parking lot and Mike Awesome ran from the outside of the arena to the inside, to inside. And it was a hit and run attack. If this happened, logic would need to play a part because you need to make it seem real. I would also give it a year between the first shot and the blow off because there is nothing that says you can't with social media, with the idea that they could show up in each other's shows, with hit and run attacks, you could do promos, you could do shoots, you could do, you know, you could run the, run the gauntlet on social media with YouTube 
and especially with how big YouTube has been for AEW, you can run the gauntlet with YouTube and all that stuff if you choose to. But I would give a year because there's no way you could build up this type of joint show in less than a year properly. This would unquestionably be the biggest event in our generation if something like this ever happened. I think it's possible, but still not likely, because of the egos involved, that it may be able to work something out. But there's only so much that the two parties would be able to compromise if it is possible. It's fun to think about, though. It is fun to think about, though. You know, the one, I'm not saying you would have FTR versus the Usos for all the gold, and you had FTR win every title known to mankind, the IWGP World Tag Team titles, the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles, the AAA Tag Team titles, the WWE Tag Team titles, and the AEW Tag Team titles. I'm not saying that. I'm not even saying you have the three, uh, uh, three uh, trios tag team match. <laughs> with a, the AEW Tag Team Champions, the Bucks, the Usos, and the FTR all in the match for all the gold, because that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. A joint show like this would not be about the same thing that Forbidden Door would be about. Forbidden Door was about establishing a relationship and opening the door for people like FTR, for people like Thunder Rosa, for people like... Um, John Moxley, who has been going back and forth from New Japan, and Brian Danielson to go back to New Japan. It's, it was to open the door and re reestablish a relationship for New Japan with an American company for their talent and their champions to go back and forth. And that is completely understandable and unlike anything else we've seen in the last two decades since WCW had the relationship with New Japan. But even with WCW, the WCW top stars did not go to New Japan like AEW's top stars would, like Thunder Rosa or FTR. Hell, CM Punk wanted to fight New Japan talent before he got injured. But a joint show between AEW and WWE would not be about championships. It would be about seeing dream matches you never thought possible. Yes, it would suck if Kenny Omega would not be a, if Kenny Omega would not have the opportunity to be a part of it because of him so being on the shelf. I wish Kenny a speedy recovery and I hope he does come back. But now just imagine Roman Reigns, John Moxley, AEW's world champion versus WWE's world champion or even CM Punk versus Roman Reigns. Now do you understand why a championship would not need to be involved? Don't get me wrong. If you wanted to pick Jay White and Seth Rollins and have them collide for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, I would, si I would say sign me up and I would be the first person in line. And the possibility of Seth Rollins going over to New Japan as the IWGP Heavyweight Champion would be an intriguing sight. But the idea of WWE letting one of their top stars win another promotion's world title is something I never could imagine happening for a variety of reasons. But there's a reason why this joint show would be about more than just establishing a relationship. It would be about giving the fans dream matches they never thought possible. And you could say, oh, the Usos versus FTR has happened. No. The Revival versus the Usos has happened. Since FTR appeared in AEW, they erased every stink, all the stink from them. That was, a, that was put on them by WWE during their last few years with the company. And they are a new team. You want to throw another brand in there? You want to throw another promotion in that joint show with CMLO and New Japan and AEW and Impact and WWE? Let's throw the NWA in there too because I want to see Matt Cardona. 
I want to see Matt Cardona do something and imagine the NWA working with WWE. It is fun to imagine, and yes, I don't usually feed into rumors or question marks, but this was too much of a fun idea to not feed into, to not help question, and to not throw some fuel on the fire, and to ask you the question, would 2022 be the year it could happen? AEW worked with WWE by allowing AEW talent to appear on Raw to tribute John Cena because of the amount of respect that Tony Khan has for John Cena. The door is open. The door is open. It is just a matter if, if at this point, WWE and AEW are willing to walk through. At this point, it is just a matter of what happens next. This has been a return to the Deep Dive documentaries. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a like and comment what you think about the, possibility, about the prospect of a joint show happening and the idea that Tony Khan would be open to a joint show with WWE and giving us dream matches we never thought possible. Let me know down in the comment section below, and if you want more content just like this, there's only one place you can find it, and that is right here at Wrestling Express. Till next time.